اقتلوا يوسف او اطرحوه ارضا يخل لكم وجه ابيكم وتكونوا من بعده قوما صالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dearest brothers and sisters and welcome back so the brothers said dad he loves those two more than us wa nahnu usba whilst we are an usba and as we said usba is expressive of having like a gang mentality that we are a big group of 10 guys you know we're strong but if you think about it gangs and people that are part of gangs those kids on the streets uh, think that they are part of gangs or they actually are gangsters are they usually the smartest kids on the block or are they usually the least smartest kids on the block. Yes, that's right. People that are not very clever are like the people most likely to be bullies and the people most likely to join gangs and think that they're part of gangs. And so the brothers, what we're learning here is that they actually felt inferior to Yusuf because he's so smart and because dad loves him so much. So that got to them. It got the better of them. And so they said, وَنَحْنُ عُسْبَةً إِنَّ أَبَانَا لَفِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ And indeed, our father is in ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ is clearly misguided. Not meaning that he's misguided as in he's not a Muslim anymore or his Islam is under question. No. But our father is clearly mistaken. He has made a tremendous mistake when it comes to this issue. Meaning he should love us more than he loves them because we are an usbah, we are a strong, powerful group, we're like a gang. He should be loving us more than him. And so look how envy has already got the better of them. Not only are they speaking bad of Yusuf and Binyamin, but they're also speaking bad of dad. They're saying dad is a mistaken person. Dad has made a bad mistake. Dad has lost the plot. So envy is already causing them to make other problems in their life. Envy is already getting the better of them from so many ways. And so, after Allah tells us that they were enraged with envy over their brother Yusuf السلام, then Allah subhanahu wa tells us what they did because of that. اقتلوا يوسف او اطرحوه ارضا يخل لكم وجه ابيكم وتكونوا من بعده قوما صالحين and then one of the brothers suggested the following اقتلوا يوسف kill يوسف سبحان الله being jealous is a problem but being that jealous that you want to kill the other person who you are jealous of, that's a whole new level, whole different level of jealousy, you know. That is the level of envy that they were experiencing. Either you kill him or you do tarh of him to, a, to another place, another land. Tarh means to toss something to one side. Like a sweet wrapper where you take the sweet out, what do you do with the wrapper sometimes? Children, they toss it to one side. In the same way they're saying, either we take his life, subhanAllah, or we toss him to some other country, somewhere where he'll get lost and he'll never come back again. Why yakhlu lakum wajhu abikum? In order to have dad's face for ourselves alone. What does that mean? It means that they want the undivided attention of dad for themselves. They want it to be about them and no one else. They want dad to love them and not to love anyone else. And then the devil's deception. Planning on doing something evil, planning on doing a sin. May Allah preserve us and save us. What does somebody say to themselves? To try and make it easier to do the sin. Well, they try to, they try to say, after I do the sin, then I'll repent. After I do the wrong, then I'll change my ways. It's okay, it seems like it's not a good idea, it's very evil, but after we do this thing and after it, 
will become a nation that is salih, will nation that is upright, rectified and reformed, meaning we'll change ourselves. And subhanAllah, this is coming from shaitan. And shaitan does this to every single one of us. Isn't that true, my brother and sister? That when subhanAllah, billah, we plan on doing a sin, that the way we make it easy on ourselves to do the sin is we say, after I do the sin, I'll make tawbah. Look, for example, how many of us out there own off licenses, own shops selling alcohol, restaurants selling alcohol, and everyone knows it's not allowed, it's wrong. Working for the bank, everyone knows it's not allowed, it's wrong. People feel guilty. What do they say? Let me continue, and when I'm 50, I'll make hajj. Next year, I'll go on umrah. This is the same thing that the brothers of Yusuf said to themselves how many thousands of years ago. They said after we kill him off, or we toss him to one side, we'll, if you like, make hajj. We will change ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know how they were deceiving their own selves so that we don't deceive our own selves. So that we can stop ourselves for the sake of Allah, falling into sins and being envious. What does it mean to be envious and to be jealous of someone? Well, technically, it means that you wish that the other person over there that has something that you want, either it's something physical, like a mobile phone, let's say someone in your class has the latest iPhone, iPhone 6, and the only phone that you have is an iPhone 3 from back in the day and you feel like you know what that person I wish they didn't have that that there is envy where you wish the blessing of another person be robbed from them that is the essence of envy you can go one step worse which is what not only do I wish the person never had that blessing I wish they didn't even exist I wish that they were taken off the face of this earth subhanallah it can go to that level so envy is what the brothers experienced and they acted on that envy too and we hear how envy can destroy a person's life now as well as their life to come i'll give you a real life example on the 31st of march 2010 not that long ago there was a woman in kuwait her husband was getting married to a second wife something which is the norm there and what happened well, when she found out when that wedding was taking place, she went to the marquee, the tents that had been erected where the people were celebrating the wedding inside, and she lit up those tents, set them alight, and they said, you can Google it yourself, around 57 women and children died that night in that walima. And then she was caught thereafter and imprisoned. Just imagine. Envy raged inside of that woman to that extent that she went and killed other people, not just her husband or his new wife, but all of those people celebrating that wedding. A big disaster. She lost her dunya as well as her akhirah, unless Allah forgives her. And look here, the Prophet ﷺ told us about envy and the, and the danger of envy when he said that envy and jealousy it consumes good deeds just like the fire consumes wood. That just like fire eats away at the wood, so too does envy when you entertain it, when you think about nothing but the thing that you envy and the one you envy, it starts to eat away at your good deeds, eat away at your iman and makes you a worse person. So what is the answer to envy? The answer to envy is number one, to fight the envy. And number two, to recognize what envy really is. Allah says in the Quran, أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ Allah says that are you people being jealous of others because of what? Not because of what they have, but because of what Allah has given them out of His favor. See, Allah wanted to draw their attention, oh jealous person, to the fact that you're envious of what somebody has, but what they have is what Allah gave them. 
So by saying, why does that person have that iPhone 6? I should have that iPhone 6. What you're actually saying is, Astaghfirullah, Allah, you made a mistake giving it to that person. You should have given that to me. Subhanallah. Yes, this is the gravity of envy. That you're questioning the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're asking questions indirectly, though you don't know it, that why does so-and-so have something and I don't? Why do they have a better job than me? Why do they have a wife that takes care of them and I don't? And I'm jealous of that. Well, you're actually saying, my brother or sister, Allah, that person doesn't deserve it. Why did you give it to that person? You made, well, iyad billah, a mistake. Yes, that is the, that is the evil spirit behind envy. And just by knowing this, it can be enough to help someone to fight off and to stamp out the envy in their hearts. And this subhanallah, how the Prophet guided us to read Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq and Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas seeking refuge from Allah from envy and the envier. And sometimes the envier is your own self. So we're asking Allah, begging Allah to help us fight off the evil of envy and to help reform and clean our hearts of this disease. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. And with this inshallah, we come to the end of the episode. And next episode, we'll continue the exploration of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahmi ajmain. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, Allah.